everyone, it's Merc007 here. Thank you for joining my video. Today I want to introduce to you a Dojin board game from Japan. Dojin games are indie games from Japan, usually handmade or self-published with a small print run. A lot of games designed in Japan can go out of print really quickly, no matter how beautiful or wonderful the game is, as printing is extremely expensive. That's why some Japanese games are so rare and sought after. This beautiful board game from Japan is called Izayoi. It was designed by the Dojin Indie Board Game Design Group, Nanatsumu. Nanatsumu want to share Japanese culture using board games to the rest of the world. And this wonderful game really reflects that. So I wanted to share it with you. This is not a paid promotion. The version I have is the Japanese version and they're making an international print run launching on Kickstarter soon on August 18th. So please support their project so they can achieve their print run. Izayoi is a fun game where players play as artisans in Japan to vote and try to collect these beautiful wakamona, otherwise known as Japanese accessories to earn the most points without exceeding the points of their master. To win a Wakamona tile, player plays cards to vote. The cards have these symbols on one of the lines, which counts as votes for that artisan. For example, the archery symbols are votes for the archery artisan. The player with the most votes in a row wins that Wakamona. If there is a draw, the next player with the most votes wins that Wakamona title. This game introduces a Japanese cultural aspect called Sontaku. In Japan, as a sign of respect and politeness, we should respect our elders and don't embarrass them by outdoing them. If you overshadow your master in this game, you will be eliminated from the game and cannot win. Let's take a look. The box is wonderfully compact and can be great as a gift for family and friends. This game is for 3 to 5 players, ages 7 and up, and it plays for around 15 minutes. In the game, you get these wonderful components and beautiful tiles. Also, there will be a little guide to explain what the wakamono are with a little description. The English version will have the English description. The setup is very simple. Place the game board in the center of the table. Shuffle all the Wakamono tiles and take three out of the game. Place that stack face down to form a deck. Reveal the first Wakamono tiles and place them on the game board. The Wakamono tiles have the points values written on them. Also, this number symbolizes how many tiles can be placed in each row. So there are the points and how many tiles. In this case, the Wakamana row can only have three voting tiles max. The winner of this row will also get three points. For three to four players, Remove sets of master cards and sets of voting cards that match. For example, if there are four players, you can remove all the Kudo Japanese archery cards. Each player is given one artisan to play. For example, an artisan that supports Kudo, Japanese archery, or an artisan that is involved in Sado, Japanese tea ceremony. Each player is given a secret card to be their master. This is the person they cannot shame or outdo by gaining more points than them. Of course, if your master is yourself, you don't have to worry about shaming yourself. You can go for as many points as you want. Here 
give each player two special cards with the red side facing up, which can be used once per game. A player can activate any one of these cards on their turn. This card allows the player to discard all their cards and draw new ones. This card allows them to play one voting card face down into the row. Each row can only have one voting card face down. Deal voting cards to each player equal to the number of players. In a four player game, deal four cards. In a three player game, deal three cards. There are also two stop cards in the deck. When these are played in a row, it ends that row. No more cards can be placed afterwards in that row. The player who bought a Japanese accessory or any accessory the most recently will go first. Play goes clockwise. On your turn, you can play a card to any row to help the vote for that wakamono. Or use one of your special cards. If the row reaches a maximum number of tiles, or a stop card is played, you determine who earned that wakamono. Whomever has the most votes in that row wins the wakamono. If there is a tie, the player with the next most votes wins that wakamono. If there is not a next player, then that tile is not won by anyone and just removed. Of course, if your master is another player, you may want to help them get more points so they have more points than you, while another player may be trying to do the same to you. At any time, if there are no more cards in the draw pile, shuffle the discard pile and form a new draw pile. Once the last Wakamona tile has been acquired, the game ends. Everyone reveals their secret master, then checks. If they got equal to or more points than their master, they are considered uncouth and disrespectful. They are eliminated from the game and cannot win. The only exception is if your secret master is yourself, then you can earn as much points as you want. The remaining players then compare scores and the one with the highest score is the winner. If there is a draw, the one who has earned the most Wakamono tiles is the winner. The player has won enough Wakamono and still paid respect to their master following the traditional Japanese way of Sontaku. This is a wonderful unique game. Usually in most board games we either try to earn the most points to win or try not to earn the most negative points. But for this game, you want to earn a lot of points, but not be too greedy and earn equal to or more than your master. Often you will need to help another player get more points, so you won't be the one eliminated. The gameplay match with the beautiful aesthetics of this game makes it a great game for your collection. It also has such a small footprint 
So if you have a lot of games, this one is easy to store and bring to a game day. I played it once and then I wanted to play it again. And not all games have that kind of feel. If you like what you saw or you like the theme or are looking for a wonderful gift from Japan, this is a must get. Usually Japanese dojin games are quite difficult to get if you live outside of Japan. So this is your chance. If Nanatsumu does well with their fundraising campaign, maybe they can make more dojin games and share more games with the world. Please support them. I want to share more dojin indie games from Japan, so please like and subscribe if you like my content. That way I know to make more. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye!